Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and right about now, we're about to do some calculus. We're about to do a pretty traditional problem in any calculus course. Find the equation of the tangent line at the given point. I should say a high school calculus course or a Calc 1 course. Find the equation of the tangent line at the given point. All right, so this is the curve or the function that we're given, right? And we want to find the equation of the tangent line that touches this curve at exactly this point. All right, so we got three steps. First step, find the derivative. Second step, find the slope of the line by substituting this x value into the derivative, right? Third step, we take the slope that we just found and our x1 value and a y1 value and find the equation of the line. All right, so we look at this first, right? When we got to first size it up and figure out, okay, well, how do I find the derivative of this? I noticed that this is an expression, 5x plus 5, and it's to the 1 half power. So this is kind of like a composite function, right? So when we see something that looks like this, we think chain rule, chain rule. Chain rule is what we use, all right? So this is how we use the chain rule. So we're gonna use the power rule, right? For this function, we'll use the power rule. So we're gonna swing the one half to the front, and then we keep the original function just as it was, right? And then, but with the power rule, don't you gotta subtract one from the original exponent? Right? The one half is the original exponent. So we gotta subtract one from one half. So one half minus one is negative one half. So that's our new exponent, negative one half, right? But then you also, with the chain rule, you gotta take the derivative of that function, five x plus five. All right, so the derivative of five x plus five is five. And why is it five? It's five because the derivative of five x is just five because the derivative of x becomes one. Right? The derivative of a variable becomes 1. Um, so then that's going to be, the 5 was already there. You leave the 5 alone, you do 5 times 1 to get 5. Now what happens to the 5 right here? The derivative of a constant becomes 0. So that, zero, that, that 5 is gone, basically. It turns into a 0. So this is our, our derived function. But I'm going like, to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to do this. Um, watch this. Watch what I do. Watch me work. And then I got 2. And then I got 4. And then I got 5x plus 5. All right, so look what I did. Look what I did. Check me out. Now, that looks like that might look real different from this, right? But let me explain. Let me explain where everything came from, right? So we can think of this as a fraction because we got the one half, right? So if I treated this like a fraction, 2 is already in the denominator, right? Now, how did the 5x plus 5 get down here? Because it had a negative exponent. Think about ex exponent rules, specifically the negative exponent rule. What happens when you have a negative exponent? If you don't know, go to my playlist on exponent rules. Go to my playlist on exponent rule. I'm going to get you right. Go to my playlist on exponent rules and do a deep dive. And go binge watch. All right? I'm going to get you right. So because your exponent is negative, that means you move it to the other side of the fraction. But you might say, oh, but this is not a fraction. Right? But this is an invisible. Any expression or whole number can be treated like a fraction by considering that there's an invisible one denominator underneath of it. So if I move it to the other side of the fraction, I'm moving it to the denominator, essentially. Now, where does radical sign come from? You might be thinking, like, where did radical sign come from? Well, what does 5x plus 5 to the 1 half power mean? That's called a rational exponent. But we can convert from having a rational exponent to having a radical. Because this denominator, too, is our root, which means we have a square root. Or I should say our index, our index or our root. And the exponent 1, the numerator, means we have an exponent of 1. So this is 5x plus 5 to the first power. That's where the 1 comes from. And it's the second root. That's where the 2 comes from. So the 2 means we have a second root. The 1 means to the first power. Right? Now the 5 was already on top because this is like 5 over 1. So the 5 is the only thing that stayed up top. All right? So now you understand where everything came from. And that's what you should do. Whenever you're in class, right, Make sure you understand, because I know a lot of professors just be up at the board writing and writing and writing. Don't even be explaining what they be doing. And a lot of people, and also it's like you can't just blame them because as a student, it is your responsibility to advocate for yourself and be assertive and stand up and be like, yo, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, where did radical sign come from? Where did, you know, what happened to the negative one half? What happened to the, you know what I mean? Like, that's your responsibility to speak up for yourself. You got to ask some questions for real, for real. All right? Don't be sitting there suffering in silence. You can't do that. All right, so anyway, um, now we got the derivative. This is our derivative. 5 over 2 times the root of 5x plus 5. Now, second step. 
we're going to find the slope. So in order to find the slope, we take the x value, right? And I'm going to call the slope m, right? We take the x value and replace any x in this derivative with the x value of 4, because it's 4, right? So I got 5 times 4 plus 5. This is going to work out nice and neat. Watch. So look at what's going on, right? So we treat the radical sign kind of like parentheses. So in the parentheses, we still follow order of operations. Multiply before we add. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 plus 5 is 25. What's the square root of 25? 5. What's 2 times 5? 10. So now we got 5 over 10. And what's 5 over 10 reduced? 1 half. Boom. There you go. 1 half. Nice and neat. Once again, I'll run it back. I'll run it back from the top. Inside the radical, what's 5 times 4? 20. What's 20 plus 5? 25. What's the square root of 25? 5, because 25 is a perfect square. So that's 5. Where did 10 come from? Because you do 2 times that 5. All of this turned into a 5. You do 2 times 5 to get 10. You already had a 5 up top. What's 5 over 10? 1 half. Why? Because you reduce it. 5 and 10 have a common factor of 5. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. That's 1 half. That's 1 half. All right? It's like common, common factor. The common factor is 5. All right? We get 1 half. Now, that's our second step. Our slope is 1 half. Our x1 value is 4. Our y1 value is 5. Now, let's use point slope form. Let's use point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right? So y minus y1 is 5. 5 is not y. We use y1 and x1 for the values of the x and y value of our given point. Keep that in mind, too. So that's y minus 5 is equal to 1 half times x minus 4. So then I got y equals 1 half x minus 2 plus 5. y equals 1 half x plus 3. y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. And I love it when a plan comes together. You know what I'm saying? So now, but how did I get all this though? Let me explain this a little bit. Make sure you understand this. So what happened to the negative 5? I transposed it, moved it over to the other side of the equation. That's why it's plus 5. It's the same thing as using the addition property of equality. Adding 5 on the left side, adding 5 on the right side. And double plus 5 over here. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. That's why it's going from on, on the left side. What happened to the x and the negative 4? Distribution or distributive property. 1 half times x is 1 half x. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. Where did 3 come from? Negative 2 plus 5. That's how I get 3. All right? And that's the answer. And that's chain rule. We use chain rule, right? Well, no, that, that, that example of using the chain rule wasn't too heavy, right? But, you know. So, but this, this is how you find the equation of a tangent line at a given point. Three steps. Find the derivative, but you gotta know, you got to know how to find derivatives. Find the derivative, take the, take the x value given to plug it into the derivative in order to find the slope of the line at that point, and then take the x and y values plus the slope to find the equation of the line. It's that simple. But definitely go get some practice. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.